Did you know that Windows 10 has a built-in digital assistant? Its name is Cortana and it can set up reminders for you, tell you things on your calendar, look up things on the internet and much more. I'll show you how to use Cortana today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I am the owner of Gateway Productivity and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. I've had several questions about Windows 10 Cortana lately. So I wanted to do a video for you about how to get that set up and how to use it and some ideas of things above and beyond that you might want to use it for. For those who aren't familiar, Cortana is a digital assistant that's built into Windows 10. You can think of it like a Siri or an Amazon Echo Dot or a Google Mini, all those different things that you can talk to them and ask them to do things and they will do things for you, such as setting reminders, checking things on your calendar, checking the weather, checking sports scores, all those different things and looking things up on the internet as well. I found that the hardest thing with Cortana is really just getting it set up in the first place. So I'll walk you through those steps first. The way you can access Cortana is by going to your bottom taskbar. Mine is hidden, so we'll go hover down here. And it's this little circle. And that opens the Cortana app. Now, the history of Cortana is that it used to be built into the search function in your Windows 10, but it, they have recently broken it out as a separate app. Once you click on the Cortana button, if you don't see this, it'll probably be asking you to log in. That usually happens if you have two different accounts, Microsoft accounts associated with your computer in some way. So you'll want to select the one that's your primary, usually your own personal address or something along those lines. The reason it asks you to do that is because it can connect to your calendar and all the different things that you could possibly need it to as long as you give it permission. And we'll be talking about that as we go along. As you can see here, if you choose not to use Cortana with the voice recognition, you can put things in here such as open Excel. And even in that case, you can see that I misspelled Excel, but it figured out what I wanted. If you choose to use the typing method, there's not as many things that Cortana can do as if you turn on the speech recognition. However, this is very nice if you have a hard time finding things on your computer, you can open really any app on your computer by asking Cortana to do so. If you do want to use the speech recognition, which is really the best part of Cortana, then you'll go to the upper left corner, these three dots, the ellipsis, and choose settings. And there are multiple things you'll need to look at. If you're going to use Cortana a lot, you might want to look at the keyboard shortcut and change it to something that makes sense for you. However, we won't worry about doing that right now. We're going to go straight to the microphone. Let's click on that. And you can see it's giving me the notification that there's certain things that I haven't turned on that will make Cortana work. So when we see this, you haven't turned on online speech recognition. I need to go to these speech privacy settings and it will open the settings within my computer to do that. And you can see I have it turned off currently. All I have to do is click on this to turn it on and I can close my settings. And now you can see that all required permissions are turned on. You may also need to go into your microphone permissions. Let's click on that and see what it looks like. The main thing is that you need to make sure that microphone access for the device is turned on. You want that to be right here and you can always change that here. And if you have a microphone plugged in, then you'll need to make sure it's recognizing that microphone. Otherwise, if you have a microphone built into your computer, it should default to that one. You also need to make sure that this option here, allow apps to access your microphone is turned on because as we said earlier, Cortana is considered an app in your computer. If you ever need to check which apps have access to your microphone, you can click and drag the scroll bar down or scroll with your mouse and you can see all of the different things down below here that have access to your microphone. Once we're done looking at the microphone settings, if that's something that you even need to do, then we are going to close this box. You can see it takes us right back to where we were in the Cortana settings. Now we want to go to the voice activation. 
And again, you can see it guides me. It tells me that you haven't turned on all the required permissions. So the one thing that is a, a link in blue is what I want to click on. And this is where we want to make sure that apps are allowed to use voice activation. You can see this first one, I do have it turned on, so that's not the problem. The next one, allowing apps to use voice activation when this device is locked, that's even on. So I'm trying to find what's turned off that's the problem. And this one is not the problem because it's turned on. So let's go a little further. Now we get down here to the Cortana section and we see that I need to let Cortana respond to the keyword Cortana. So we'll turn that on. And here is where I can decide if I want Cortana to be able to be used when the computer is locked. I think in this case for me, I would like to have that turned off. Now that we've looked through these settings, again, we can close this screen. And now you can see it changes to all required permissions are turned on. At this point, we know that the voice activation permissions is where we already were, so we don't need to go back there. So let's use our back button. Now we're back to the main menu and you can see it automatically walked us through microphone and then also voice activation. So the last thing we want to look at is our privacy settings. Here's where you can determine what exactly you want Cortana to have access to and thus Windows 10 and Microsoft. You can choose calendar and email access that you want Cortana to have access to. You can choose whether you want to view and clear the data that Microsoft saves to the cloud. What I would recommend is leaving that be because Cortana will be more helpful to you the more history is out there for you. Every once in a while it's fine to clear your history, but for the best use of Cortana you may need to leave some of that in there. And lastly, the chat history. Basically, you're going to be chatting with Cortana. Some of it you could do by text, some of it you could do verbally, but it's going to create a chat between you and Cortana, and you can clear that at any time. Now that we've gone through all of our settings for Cortana, let's use the back button to get back to where we were before. Now we can see that we've gone through all of this, and this last one tells us the hardware involved. If you don't have anything plugged into your computer, that's fine. It will use the automatic microphone as we talked about before. To get back to Cortana itself, we'll use this back button here. And now we can see that we're back to Cortana. As with any digital assistance device, now that we've turned everything on for voice recognition, it is constantly listening for its name. So if you're talking to someone else about Cortana, it's hearing you say that. However, if you don't give a command, then it won't do anything. When you have the app open like this, Cortana will actually assume that you're going to type something. If you want to say something when you have the app open, you'll want to click this little button that says speak to Cortana. The magic of Cortana is when you close the app, then you can talk to Cortana and Cortana will open without you having to open the app. Let's test that. Cortana, open Excel. Okay, I'll open Excel. As you can see, Cortana will respond to you and all you have to do is say the name and then what you want it to do. Let's try something else. Cortana, set an alarm for one minute. Sure, I've turned on your alarm for 5.07 p.m. on. You can see the benefits of having Cortana turn on alarms or reminders or Cortana, tell me the weather. Right now, it's mostly sunny and 33. The forecast shows partly sunny skies with a high of 36 and a low of 29. You can have Cortana search the internet for you. Cortana, Search the definition of joy. Joy has two distinct meanings. As a noun, it means a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. Or as a verb, it means rejoice. You can even hook Cortana up to your calendar and have her create appointments. As you can see, the possibilities are pretty limitless for the things that you can have Cortana do. As with any digital assistance device, there are pros and cons. 
Some people have concerns about the privacy involved because the machine is listening for its name and also because it can access all different types of things, although you set those permissions. But then of course there's the benefits of being able to set reminders and set alarms and do all of those things without having to hit a button. I especially recommend that you consider Cortana if you're someone who works well with audio feedback, where you do better if someone is telling you something because the machine can tell you to remember things. It can also bring up calendar appointments. It can read things to you. So if you're someone who likes that type of thing better, and especially if you like audiobooks and things like that, you might want to give this a try. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. And you can also put questions down there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You can also click the thumbs up to like the video or share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And don't forget to please subscribe with the red button below. Once you click the red button, you'll have a choice to click a bell icon to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.